Hey, what it do, y'all? It's your boy E2 Blue coming back at you again. And again, we're weeks away from training camp, but the, the countdown has. We're getting close, y'all. And the excitement for training camp is up and running. So, in the meantime, I've been doing this series with um, talking about different players on the team. They got added this offseason, some guys that are rookies, some guys that are veteran. Um, I did Cody McElroy, and I talked about um, um, some other guys, too, as well. So I will be doing more and more every other day or whatever, um, just giving you different perspectives on different things and different guys that people are not thinking about, and maybe you can learn something. So today I'm talking about uh, defensive back, cornerback, um, Chris Westry. Now, I know a lot of you guys have heard of him. Um, he is from the University of Kentucky. He played all four years. And one fun fact about him is that he never missed a game at the University of Kentucky. Now, he is an undrafted guy, although, um, and I'm gonna speak about the, the reasons why he was undrafted, but um, he ran a 4-3-4. Yes, he ran a 4-3 and a 40-yard dash. Now, fast player, 6-4. Now, two big key things, and um, like I said, he's a very durable guy. He was a uh, 30 visit for the Dallas Cowboys. So, you know, that shows a lot. It tells you a lot because they were interested in him when he was in college. And, again, he was a 30 visit um, this offseason, um, you know, you know, combine time. So, again, um, you look at this guy, 6'4", you don't see a lot of cornerbacks that tall. And there's a reason why. Um but we know that Chris Rashard likes those big physical guys. You know, you see what he did with Richard Sherman and Cam Chancellor and Earl Thomas. Even though Earl Thomas is like my height, he's like 5'11", but, you know, you get what I'm saying. Um, you look at those secondary guys, and, like, he fits the prototype of what Chris Rashard really wants on this team. Um, <clears throat> uh, biggest thing with him is normally – Guys that are six four don't play cornerback. They're either wide receiver. They're on the offensive side of the ball. You know what I mean? And think about it. Him being six four, when you look at the cornerbacks, it's like do 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 do. Like it's, it's the height is like a big difference. And you know when when he's going up against a wide receiver, he may be taller than that wide receiver, depending on who he's going with. Um, you got to put him on a tight end or something. But the funny thing about it is a lot of teams do, don't normally look at guys that are six four that are that tall as DBs because one simple thing, um, they're, yes, he's tall, long, got long arms, he can bat the ball, but the problem is cutting. When you are backpedaling, and, and, and again, teams will tell you, you backpedal your five yards and you cut and turn. Now, if you can't cut and turn um, left or right and your lateral movements aren't that great, um, you're not going to be a good DB in this league because again that is what you're solely based on is your movements your, are you able to cut are you able to stop cut a different direction and still maintain your speed because I'm telling you the wide receivers are going to cut and they're going to be gone and they're, and you, they're going to be 5-10 yards ahead of you they're going to catch that ball over you and they're going to get a touchdown so one thing as a defender that you cannot do is lose focus when it comes to that and a lot of teams shied away from him because of that reason because they thought that you know most tall guys are lanky they're not able to move like that their center of gravity is not because they sit too tall they're too high it's almost like um those of you that are car enthusiasts know what i'm talking about when you got your car lowered and you got lowering springs on your car your center of gravity is lower so you're able to hit corners tighter because your chassis is tight so you're able to hit them corners and come back and you're not all squirrely and running around but if you got a monster truck or you got one of those lifted trucks you're hitting the corner man you're going to topple if you if you cut it too fast because again you're going to be you know floppy cock and you're going to be all over the place so you know which is not a good thing so when you look at these dbs to make that comparison um longer guys like that tall guys like that Typically, they're not athletic enough to cut like that. But again, this guy has proven that he's a fast guy. But again, I assume that that's a lot of the reason why teams are not um, hadn't looked at him. But the Cowboys sure enough liked him because he has the physicality and he definitely has the um, the range that they're looking for. Now, 
Another thing about him too is in college, and again, you get away with a lot more things in college than you can do in, 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 in the pros. And a lot of times these players don't – it's hard to unlearn a habit that you've been doing your whole life. You look at a lot of these quarterbacks, and sometimes they come in the league not having the best form or being able to throw the ball that well. Um, you know, sometimes they have to relearn mechanics, and, and it starts from the beginning. It starts in the peewees. It starts in, in Pop Warner. You know what I mean? When when you're learning your fundamentals and, and how to do things the right way. Now, one thing with him, um, he's known for tugging and holding at the line of scrimmage. So when that wide receiver's coming off the line, he's grabbing him and holding him. Again, in the NFL, you, could, you, do, you do that five yards off the ball, it's going to be uh, holding every time. You can't do that. And, again, a lot of teams shied away from him because of the lankiness and because of the simple fact that, um, he's a, he's a tugger. Now we had a couple other guys on this team that were tuggers when they first came. I think Mo, Mo Claiborne had a little issue with it too, but they corrected it a little bit. He was a first round pick, so they figured it out. But his, injuries hampered his career. That was that was his demise. But I think Chris Chris Westry. I think he's a really good DB. Um, again, will he make this team? Look at what we have at cornerback right now. You know, with Anthony Brown and 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 Byron Jones and. Their contracts, are, I think all of our cornerbacks' contracts are up after this season. So it's like, who are you going to pay? I know they're going to bring back Byron because they already said that they love him and he's one guy. I mean, Anthony Brown could be a guy that they don't re-sign. Um, they could look for Chris Restry maybe to take that spot. Who knows? But I look at it like this. There's opportunity on this team right now. There's competition throughout. Now, do I think he can make the team? Could be a long shot. But maybe not really, because you look at Chris Richard and how he raves and talks about him. They do talk about his weaknesses, which I, you know, just explained to you. But again, even with those weaknesses, you can change certain things. Hell, Kidna ain't been here two seconds, and he's already helped Dak Prescott uh, plant his feet and better mechanics throwing the ball. And it's not like Dak sucked as a quarterback. You know, I know some of you guys think otherwise, but whatever. Um, Dak Prescott always had the ability but again when you have the right coach in place somebody that could just teach you a little something to you know help you out in your game it works and I think like I said with Chris's biggest issue is him holding too much and um and I think that you know I'm not not saying that he can't cut but again people of his stature it, it's very rare for them to be a guy that that shows mobility like a younger type of guy. But I think his speed will make up for it. So, again, only training camp will tell. We'll see what happens in training camp. The battle is going to be fierce. We'll see what happens. Now, um, I really like this kid. Um, Hard-working guy. Uh, like I said, he never missed a game at Kentucky, so which shows you that he's durable. Uh, right now, he's number 39 for the Cowboys, so look out for him in training camp on defense. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments about this guy. Um, <clears throat> if you guys followed him when he was at the University of Kentucky at all. But again, it shows a lot that the Cowboys brought in a lot of these undrafted players um, from their 30 visits. And, you know, there's, I feel like this particular draft, for whatever reason, it's a lot of guys that came out of this draft or, or did, I'm sorry, that didn't get drafted that should have got draft, drafted. And teams are getting diamonds in the rough. Now, you look at Cowboys track record with doing great things with undrafted free agents. I think the best one we have was Tony Romo. Um, you look at him. You look at Miles Austin. You look at um, Cole Beasley. You look at all these these guys that have been undrafted that's actually done things for the Cowboys. Now, um, some of them got big money. Some people went elsewhere like Cole Beasley. But, you know, one thing I will say about Cole Beasley, I really liked him as a player until he started doing this. But um, I will always respect him as a player. But, again, you can't forget where you came from. The Cowboys gave him a chance, and he can't. He should be very respectful to the organization that helped him maturate in his um, pro career. But that's just me. I just look at things a different way. So I'll be doing more and more of these videos. Um, I'll be I'll be talking about uh, Larry Allen Jr. I'm gonna talk about um, I'm gonna do one on John V. Uh, Johnson and and Guyton. Um, I'm gonna do them last though because those are like my 
finale guys. I'm, I'm going to break the ice with those at the end. So I'm going to save those guys to closer to training camp. But I'm, but if you guys like this series, let me know what you think about it. I'm going to keep doing these videos on uh, taking a look, taking a look at these guys um, up until training camp. So, uh, like I said, let me know what you guys think about Chris Westry and, and as these cornerbacks as a whole, um, and, the, and also the safeties, too. Let's not forget about that. Just DBs in general. Um, how do you think the secondary is going to do this year? But um, anyway, with that being said, y'all, thanks again to all my subscribers. I appreciate um, all your support. Hey, tomorrow's the 4th of July. Happy birthday, America. Um, whatever you do, like I said in the last video, don't blow your fingers off, JPP. So, um, <laughs> too soon? I'm sorry. Uh, but anyway, uh, be safe tomorrow. If you guys are having fun, Whatever you do, be safe. Family, friends, cookouts, that's you know, that's what we're doing. So um, I'll most likely be doing a video tomorrow um, wherever I'm at. So look out for that. It's your boy E2Blue. Always keep it real. Talk to y'all soon. Y'all have a great Wednesday.